everyone. I've got a nice archway today, possibly Greece, possibly Spain. Um, I think we've done something very similar in the past as I've been drawing it out. I've I've been looking at it thinking, hmm, have we done something similar? Um, but I'm going to do this um, with a little bit of mixed media today, so it will be different if we have done something very similar in the past anyway. Okay, so what I want you to do is draw it out. I've actually gone smaller than the full sheet, but you can go the full sheet if you want to. Um, I've actually started by getting this shape at the top and then working my way down the steps and make sure I get this line in here and then lastly the light just up here. Um, I've taped around the colours that I've got, raw sienna, permanent rose, I've got a light grey which is made with, with cobalt blue and burnt sienna, a dark grey which is made with ultramarine and burnt sienna and then I've got a tiny bit of gamboge and intense blue to make a green. I've put no water in that green I want it to be nice and thick. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to come to this top section at the back. So I'm just using my round number 10 to pop some water on. I don't want to put too much water on at this stage. Okay, so I'm just making sure I haven't got too much on here, so I've taken a little bit off. I'm going to come in with a little bit of raw sienna. You can come over the whole of that section, you don't want it to be too dark taking a little bit off. You want, to, you want that feeling of light in there. This is a damp brush just taking a little bit off. I'm going to come into the mid grey. And just come to the, wall, to the bottom section of this wall. I don't want you to worry about the, the bougainvillea at all, we're going to put that on later. So there's not much paint on the brush here, I just want to get that really nice soft effect of, of the brickwork that I can see without too much effort. I've got my round number six, it's loaded up with the green paint, really thick, it's dry, you can touch a bit off. What I want to do is come in and create a soft effect of this shrubbery in the back. Now, the trick is to start in the middle and work your way out. So if it goes too far, it's, you're not starting at the edge and it's spreading too far. It's about getting the right timing For that softness that's not spreading and flowing too much. The sheen should just start to be going off on the paper which was why I used the round number 10 as well when I put the water on. It means I'm not putting too much on. And then it's lots and lots of little dabs to start to get this effect. can make sure you get some towards the edge of this wall here you get that really nice contrast between the light and the dark happening okay that's plenty I'll dry that one off Okay, so we're moving along now. I've dried that section off. We're going to come on to this next section. 
Put a little bit of water. Remember you want this to be nice and light. Dab of raw sienna, spread that well. In fact if you leave odd little bits of white it will work really nicely. And then with my number six I'm going to come in with a little bit of grey. I don't want you to worry about the doorway yet. Don't worry about that just yet. That's coming later. Dry that one off. That bit's dry and I'm coming on to this next bit now that's still in the archway. There's a little bit of water, a little bit of the raw sienna, a little bit of the grey. So I'm just trying to make sort of brick shapes. I'm going to take a hint of rose just in, in places on this one. Okay, and then I'm going to dry that one off. Okay, so that's all dry now. So I can come in and just pop this doorway in here. So this is just a little bit of grey and there's a bit of a window further up here as well. So that's just a little bit of the mid grey onto dry with my number six. I'm just going to just soften that one side in there and then just do a little bit of a line there to indicate a window sill. Okay, so I can leave those as is for now. I'm going to come on to the main section now. So I want plenty of water. And we're going everywhere but that archway now. We're going to get a bit of a base on. You can come round the light, you don't need to go over that. We've all got bits of colds already this week. Start of going back to school. Luckily nobody's had any coughs or high temperatures yet. So we've not had to get tested. So this is just raw sienna. We're popping this on. And get a nice good layer. If you think about where it's darker and where it's lighter, you can put more of the raw sienna on. Leave some bits a little bit lighter. Quite a lot lighter up here, so I'm just going to take a bit out there, and then I'm going to dab into the rose. You don't want a huge amount of rose, but there is a real hint on this wall, and it'll bring it forward in comparison to what's 
through the archway. I'm trying a little bit to follow the direction on the steps, just the horizontal strokes just tends to help a little bit and so does the verticals that I'm doing there. So there's some intention to my strokes there. I'm going to dab into the lighter grey. Concentrate on getting it in those darker areas. I'm going to put some clean film on so it's going to create its own sort of texture anyway. So I won't worry too much but you don't want it to be too too spotty. So sort of random dabs. Just do a little bit better edge there. And then I'm going to come in with the darker one as well. So this is the, the really dark one. You can always add little bits later. It's very hard to take it away. So don't go too mad. I'm just making sure I've got some on the steps here. Okay, and it's clean film time. I'm going to take a nice piece of clean film. Try not to get it stuck to me. I'm going to place it over the top. And we're thinking texture. So I'm going to scrunch a little bit at the top scrunch a little bit at the sides and then I'm going to scrunch try and scrunch a little bit more horizontally we try to do these things sometimes it's it works sometimes it doesn't we'll give it a good go so we've just got a bit of texture happening there okay and I'm going to let that dry naturally Okay, so I've dried, I've peeled that off and made sure that it's nice and thoroughly dry. I've got some really lovely texture happening. Um, so the next bit that I'm going to do is I'm going to work in with a couple of things. So I have got a watercolour pencil, I've chosen blue, and a pen. So I don't know what everybody's got at home, but if it came down to it, you could just use a pencil crayon and a biro if you needed to. Um, the pen is a sepia um, waterproof drawing pen. Some of you will have those. Um, it's just all about making some different marks and starting to create some different, different textures on here. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is just draw in with the pencil. 
So because I'm using a watercolour pencil, it means that if I take any more paint on, this will move or I could take a little bit of water on and it would move as well. And I'm being quite loose with my marks. You could use it on the side if you wanted to. I, I can't really see where my lines are at all. So I'm just going with it and making new lines. So this is going to help you get your steps back in. Concentrate just on doing the one side. The temptation to do everything means it ends up looking like a, an outline drawing. So we're just doing one side here. Coming up, I might end up with more steps than I did before, I don't know. But it'll still work fine. So I've got a little bit of detail in there. I'm going to bring in a little bit along here. Again, these are just little marks where there might be texture of stones. Think random squiggles, so you don't go too mad. Random squiggles or even shadow works quite well. Okay, I'm going to come in with the pen. So I think I'm going to do this with the pen because this will really then stand out, which I want it to do. Remember this is waterproof so I can come over this and it's not going to move. The other one is water soluble so if I go over that it will move. So it's just thinking about what you want to achieve. Now because this is so bold, the pen, this will really make this stand out. And then I want you to think carefully about where you might be using any other marks with this pen. Because everything else that you'll be doing will be detracting from this light. So I don't want you to go too mad. I think some of you will prefer the pen. Others will prefer the looseness of the watercolour pencil. If you think about where, where it's dark, that's always a good point to pop bits in. Do you want to highlight any little bits of edges? In fact I could even take a tiny bit in there. That would help that stand out. Okay, I'm going to come on with some paint next. Okay, so I'm coming on now on to dry with some watered down mid grey. And I can see where it's touching and making the blue run, which is quite nice. make sure that your grey is not too strong so you don't obliterate the layers underneath.
you're able to get that sense of darkness now and that shadow Be nice and painterly with the effect. A few watermarks will work quite nicely on something like this. Dab into some water if you want to light a bit somewhere. Just take a little bit on this wall. With something like this, a lot of it's, it's, it's about balance and a few random dabs will just give it a little bit more balance. So I'm just dabbing on a little bit of water here and there. It'll blend with the watercolour pencil, start to pull some of that out. A little bit more grey just going over there. And then I'm going to bring a bit of grey into I'm just following the shapes into there. Right, I'm just going to dry that one off. Okay, so I've dried that off, and what I'm doing now is just coming in with a few bits of extra dark so I'm mainly concentrating on the dark around the steps and then I can dab a little bit of water to blend that so just just so that it's not all hard and then I also want to come around this light Make that a bit darker. Okay, I'll dry those off. Okay, so I've dried that off. What I've done now is I'm go I'm going to use a bit of a palette knife. I've um, pot. You can see this some white acrylic ink into my green and a bit of white into some and some rose ready to to do that if you haven't got the acrylic ink you could use gouache i've got some white gouache here or some white acrylic whatever you've got if you haven't got a palette knife you could use a little bit of credit card to do this and you can have a little practice go first on a on another piece of paper i'm going to use the green first and i'm going to come in to start to create some leaf marks so you need to load the palette knife up just on the back and you can come in and you can do a, a combination of drawing and dabbing like paint the good thing is you're not going to be able to control it too much so you'll get a really nice random effect so I'm using it on its side using the point so you can still do this with a little bit of credit card if you struggle with the credit card you could use your sponge and Penny's being quite vocal I don't know if you can hear that you can do as much as or, or as little of this as you want because you've got the bit of acrylic in, it should go over quite nicely. And you should have really good coverage. So 
so I'm just doing drawing and a little bit of painting using the edge wherever I'm putting the green I'm going to come in with some rose in a minute after I've dried that off I'm going to add a little bit of Gamboge yellow to the mix because it's a little bit on the blue side. So just by taking a little bit in with the Gamboge yellow, you'll get those little highlights as if the light is catching the leaves. Okay, I'm going to dry that one off. So once you've dried your green, you can come in and do the same with your rose. So just vary the way that you're hitting the paper with the palette knife. If you don't mix your colour very well as well, you get dark and light patches. And then that works really well. You can do as much of this or as little as lists as you want. You can use a sponge if you don't like this effect. And that's pretty much it. Okay, I'll see you next week. Bye.